POV, your favorite chemistry teachers teaching you about periodic trends. All right, so hello, good morning, good afternoon. I'm happy that you guys could be here. However, even though we're back in the hybrid, um, we're gonna make the best of it. Um, I hopefully talked about the rest of the week's schedule for the next two weeks, especially up, um, up to Thanksgiving break with you in person. If I haven't, oof. I'm going to quickly sum it up here. So my plan is this, is that this week, um, which is the 9th to the 12th, because we have Friday off. Yeehaw. Um, those of you that are watching this on Monday, we don't have Friday off. Monday being the Monday of next week. Um, so that will look a little bit different. But the plan is, is that this week, we're going to go over the periodic trends lecture. Those of you that are going to be in person, um, I'm pretty sure I have like a fun little project that we're going to work on. It's about elements. It's going to make like a job application. You'll have the entire period to work on it. And like I'm really assigning nothing <laughs> in really the grand scheme of things with here. So you'll have this time to work on it and it's due up to the test. So, you know, not too bad, but you're probably going to be able to finish it by next class period, which is beautiful. Um, but I'm hoping, you know, easy breezy beautiful. The week after, my plan is that that Tuesday, Thursday, we're going to be doing a review day. I do, will have your study guide. I will be talking about the test. The test is on Thursday, Friday of next week. I believe it's the 19th and the 20th. Um, it'll be on Canvas. It'll be multiple choice. I'll talk more in detail. However, you will be allowed to use your notes on the test. Um, the reason being is that I'm only going to have the blue cohort in person. So this way, the white cohort doesn't have an opportunity to cheat. And the blue cohort doesn't feel like it's unfair that the white cohort is at home. So this way, it limits any chance of that. Um, I did take out a lot of content that I was planning on covering. I was going to talk about graphing. But I just, I don't want to really confuse you before the test. So we're lecturing this week, doing a fun activity review day, and test. And then before Thanksgiving, I'm planning a movie. I'm thinking The Martian. Something a little bit fun, a little easy breezy. And, you know, I really don't want to talk all the way up to um, Thanksgiving with lectures and then say, we're testing after, because that's not really going to benefit you. So I'm hoping that this will help you succeed. So let's begin. Okay, so first we learned what? We learned that trends move left to right, top to bottom. We did this a lot in the periodic trends lab, and so I'm hoping that you have a very strong understanding of this. Now what we're going to be going into is what and why. So like how many energy levels and how strong is the nucleus in these trends? With that, we're going to be considering these two things. If I'm moving top to bottom, left to right, in regards to atomic radius and the strength of the nucleus. So as I'm moving top to bottom, I want you to think about the atomic radius, and this is the number of energy levels and how far away are the valence electrons. I'll talk more in detail about this. However, it's really important to remember when I'm going top to bottom, each of my periods have a number. So I go one through seven when I'm going top to bottom, and those one through seven is how many rings I have. So my first one, my first energy level, I have one ring, whereas my seventh energy level, I have seven rings. And how important this is to consider how far the valence electrons are. Left to right, let me scoop myself up. Cool, I'm right here. <laughs> Um, left to right, we're going to think about the strength of the nucleus, and this is the number of protons, how strong is the pole, the number of valence electrons, and ooh, do they want to gain or lose to follow that octet rule, and how important this is when we're considering that in the trends. So I have this little cute visual for you. Fun, fun, fun. And it's just really to show you the energy levels, but it's important that as you're moving down, you should have those energy levels and the eight valence electrons corresponding with the groups that they're associated with. Um, so it really helps you understand like, hey, energy levels, valence electrons right off the bat. Now, atomic radius is important. It increases as I move from top to bottom. The reason being is I'm adding more energy levels. So think about it this way. If I'm just moving down with three energy levels, my hydrogen, I'm gonna have less of a radius. I only have one energy level, so it's a lot smaller of a radius from my proton to my first valence electron. Lithium, 
I have two energy levels, so now I have two rings. So my nucleus to my valence electron is increasing because I have that increase in energy levels. So when I get to sodium, I have three. I'm increasing that radius. And as I move down, my francium would have seven, meaning it would have the largest atomic radius. Now, that's pretty easy to follow. What gets a little confusing is as I move left to right. As I move left to right on the periodic table, I see a decrease in atomic radius. The reason being is that I have the same amount of energy levels, but I have an increase in electrons because I have an increase of valence electrons on that last shell. That negative is being attracted to my growing positive nucleus because I have more protons as I move left to right. So those valence electrons are being more attracted because there's more protons in the center, making it more positive. So I have the same energy levels as I move left to right, but because I have a more positive nucleus, because I have more protons, it's, increase, it's decreasing my atomic radius because it's pulling to the nucleus. Okay, so like breathe in and breathe out. Top to bottom, atomic radius increases because I have more energy levels. Left to right, my atomic size decreases. My atomic radius will decrease because I have more protons. My nucleus is stronger, a stronger positive charge due to the increase in protons. And I have the same energy level. Here's just a visual for you, okay? So this is my group two, or my period two, excuse me, lithium to fluorine. You're seeing that increase in protons, the decrease in atomic radius, because I have more positive center in my nucleus. So now I'm moving into my ion side. Now ions will have a different atomic radius than the neutral atom that they came from. What's the trend? So looking at this table, I would like you to make an observation in your notes telling me at least one trend that you notice um, between cation and anion if you can. Okay, so what's important to note is that the cations are more positive, so the atomic radius decreases because I'm getting rid of my electrons, so it's being more attracted to that more positive center, whereas anions are getting larger. I'm having that increase in electrons and when my center is not balancing out, it means I have a more negative atom, so it's not as attracted to my positive center. All right. All right, I'm going to scoot myself, but this is a Creighton Prep logo, so <laughs> peep me in this corner. All right, ionization energy. This is the cost to remove an electron. So when you're doing this, think about concert tickets because it's a little bit easier to kind of relate it to something that you know. Now, ionization energy increases as you move left to right. The reason being is I have a strong nuclear pull. Remember, I have that strong positive center. So the atom is not likely to give up electrons. They would rather gain to fill their octet. So they want to hold on to their electrons because they have more positives, so they're holding them in. However, the ionization energy decreases as you move from top to bottom. The reason being is I have that increased atomic radius meaning that the valence electrons are farther away. These are my cheap seats. So think about this. If I had a seat that was very close to the front, I really wouldn't want to get rid of my concert tickets, right? Because that maybe that stage has my strong nuclear pull, so I really don't want to leave. I'd rather have my friends come and buy a ticket and join me than leave to go see them in a different spot. Whereas if I was in a farther away and I just wanted to get into the concert in general, I would say, okay, I'll pay the 10, 50 bucks that they take, even if it means I'm really far away. But it also means that I don't really have the best seats in the house compared to one that is closer to the stage. All right, I'm gonna move back to this corner. So reactivity actually increases as you move from top to bottom. Your most reactive groups and families are one and seven. The reason being is that valence electrons are further from the control of the nucleus. So it's important to understand that reactivity has to do with um, the amount of valence electrons and how far they are. All right, so electronegativity. These are the measure of two atoms fighting over electrons in a bond. 
So they increase left to right, decrease top to bottom. The reason it's increasing left to right is it's going to have a harder time taking an electron from a more positive nucleus, whereas when I'm decreasing top to bottom, it's not as hard if it's farther away from the nucleus. So remember, this is important to note, noble gases do not have electronegativities. So only elements that have the need to fill in eight valence electrons or have an octet, they are going to have a higher amount of electronegativity based on where they're at. So think about when I move left to right, my right will be my seventh if they really want that octet. And so my noble gases, they just don't have it. They have enough. They're happy and content with what they have. They don't need any more electrons. Electronegativity valves usually range from zero to four, where four is the highest. So here's a visual for you to kind of get a visual, like an idea on the electronegativity values, whereas where left is kind of the lowest, minus hydrogen, and then all the way up to fluorine, that is where it's the highest. All right. I don't know if you remember who Augustus Gloop is. Augustus Gloop is in Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory or Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. I don't know. Um, but it's that guy that he gets sucked into the river and he goes up the pole and the Oompa Loompas come and they sing that song and he's, you know, he loves to eat. Um, so here's reasons why fluorine, which is my 4.1 on my electronegativity scale, is just like Augustus Gloop, who cannot get enough of the candy in the chocolate factory. It has the seven out of eight valence electrons, meaning it's one of my more reactive groups, but it has that higher electronegativity um, because it really wants an, another electron. It has that size of the atomic radius where it's really small, so it has a more positive center, and the ionization energy is very high. It really wants to have that extra electron. However, it is also closer to the center, so it's really attracted. It's like, I want, I'm more positive, I'm gonna attract these things. So fluorine can come along and easily take an electron. It's because it's just, um, it's just, a bad boy like that. It's like, hey, I see your electron and I want it. And it's strong enough to take it. All right, here we go. All this information that's here, I posted in the study guide. Your study guide is only these questions. I think you just need to have a really good understanding on these to succeed well. Um, use your homework. Please use any packets, a lab, any information that I've given you to really help you succeed. And your study guide is really going to help you be a really good study source. You can put all your notes on there. It'll make it a lot easier for you to kind of have everything organized instead of going back through and flipping through all your notes. Please use the slides, unit packets, homework, worksheets, quizzes, all that. That is all I have for you. So we're outside of my PowerPoint. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. But the study guide questions that I have here are all in that study guide. It's posted to Canvas. And all you need to do is send me your notes and work on a study guide. And that's all I have for you. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, please email me. Bye.